I spent five years believing my best friend tried to grape me. The truth is much more disgusting. Paul and Mark got along somewhat fine at first, but a few months into dating, Paul started to get upset if I said I was going to grab dinner with Mark after work, even if Paul was working at the time since he had his own long hours. For what it was worth, Mark seemed to understand where Paul was coming from and only grabbed dinner with me when I asked him, never prompting it himself. Well, on my 24th birthday, I decided to throw a party at my apartment, and when Paul flaked on helping me get supplies, Mark stepped in and helped, even going out and buying the lion's share of the booze for the party. The party got going, and Paul ended up showing up an hour after most of the others were there. After a few hours, most of the people started heading out, leaving a few people sleeping in the living room because they were too drunk to drive, and then Mark, Paul, and myself. Mark insisted I go lay down since it was my birthday, and he knew I was already pretty drunk myself, so it wasn't right for me to clean up after my own party. So I said goodnight to everyone, and Paul helped me back to the room. Like I said, I was pretty drunk. And while I remember the night, I also remember being very off my normal composure. He put me in bed on my side, facing the wall, and then left, and I pretty quickly dozed off. The next thing I remember is loud music blaring in the room and feeling completely bound. I was still inebriated, but as I tried to move around, I could feel I was tied to the bed and could feel someone on top of me. I was laying on my stomach and there was a hand on the back of my head pushing it into the pillow, so I couldn't see anything and I could feel someone stumbling to try and pull my pajamas down and shoving his hand up against me. Someone was pounding at the door until I heard a loud crack and then Mark and Paul's voices arguing. The pressure pulled off my head and I could see the one of them pulling the other away, but in the darkness I couldn't tell who was doing what, but there was a lot of screaming and crashing. A few minutes later, Paul comes comes back in the room and unties me from the bed and just holds me, telling me Mark had been trying to tie me and grape me. I wanted to file a police report, but Paul convinced me not to, since he had gotten there in time and nothing had happened, which I should have taken as a red flag, but I just didn't at the time because I was so relieved that I had been saved. I took a few days off from work, blocked Mark on all social media, but not before he texted me trying to tell me that Paul had been the one to attack me and that he was the one that saved me. I didn't believe him, because it had been Paul that came in and untied me though, and if Paul had been trying, then why would he do that? Plus, we were dating and it just didn't make any sense to me, so I thought Mark had just snapped or something. I ended up quitting from the company before my time off ended because I had been starting to look at advancement in my career and moving on, so I just decided that was my sign and tried to run away from it all. Paul and I kept dating for about six months after that until I caught him cheating on me with a lady from his office. Maybe this should have been a bigger red flag to me too, but I had been trying to distance myself from what had happened. Then life just went on. I got comfortable in my new job, stayed away from getting too friendly with anyone from work, and have never had a close guy friend again. Occasionally, I'd see Mark at the grocery store or around town. Like I said, we had lived close to each other, and neither of us moved, and I never felt the need to since he kept his distance from me completely, and I thought I was mostly over what had happened half a decade ago, until I get a notification a few hours ago that Paul had messaged me. I thought that was odd because I had blocked him. He made a new account, but I opened the message up anyway because of curiosity. I don't want to share the whole message because there's a lot of personal details in it, so I'm going to just hit the important details. So according to him, Paul is an alcoholic and has been for years. Even back when we first started dating, he pretty much was always drinking something or looking for an excuse. He got fired from his job for showing up to work drunk and assaulting the receptionist by trying to force her kissing him in the front lobby at 9 a.m. He was in court-mandated AA, and as part of his recovery, he was trying to make amends with anyone he has wronged because of his habit. And finally, Mark never tried to grape me. It was him. He had been jealous of my friendship with Mark and saw an opportunity to get him out of the picture because of how gullible I was. I'm not going to lie. I threw up after reading the whole thing. He had so much detail behind all of it that I just felt sick to my stomach that he not only remembered everything, from how he had secretly put ties on my bed before I even went to sleep once he saw how drunk I was getting, to how he beat the shit out of Mark and threatened to kill him if he went to the cops. I know it's not a healthy reaction, but I've been drinking a bit since all of that message hit my inbox trying to decide what to do. I know I need to call my therapist to talk about all of this, but my mind keeps going back to Mark and how betrayed he must have felt over it all. I even unblocked him on all my social media. He never blocked me, so his profiles popped back up pretty quickly. And I've been trying to decide if I should message him or not. I know logically that Paul should be the one messaging him as a part of his AA stuff, but I'm also pretty sure that Mark did block him since Paul mentioned not being able to find him on social media, but he also might not have remembered Mark's last name either, so it might be hard to find him. So I guess my question is, should I message Mark? What would I even say? Sorry I didn't believe you when you said you didn't try to grate me. Update a day later. I have texted my therapist and I'm waiting for a reply now. I'm hopeful she has some time this afternoon or tomorrow that I can speak with her, but my friend is staying with me until I can speak with her, just so that I don't have to be alone right now, and I can't say just how much I appreciate it. To those of you that have provided advice or shared your stories with me, thank you. Deeply from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Last night, when I received that message, I was thrown for such a loop that I didn't
didn't know where to begin or how to unpack it all, given the time that had passed. Old wounds can be reopened so easily, and this one was a scar that didn't need much to make it pop. Second update one week later. I would like to start this off by first saying I haven't gone back to the wine, though I did super desperately want to yesterday. I haven't really been much of a drinker since that night five years ago in last week, when I learned the disgusting truth about Paul. To those if you hoping I would file a police report, I did. I spoke with my therapist at length the Monday following my post, and she was shocked but extremely helpful in helping me process everything, and she spent some time last what should have been the end of our video appointment, looking up the statute of limitation laws in my state, there are none for these type of crimes. And while she warned me that my report might just be added to a pile of other charges Paul could possibly have against him, given that he was assigned court-mandated AA. All the same, I filed the report with screenshots of his messages to me printed and attached. I'm not sure what to expect from that, and at the end of the day, I hope he has an absolute shit life if it goes nowhere. Now, as for Mark, my therapist was insistent that I at the very least write him something, whether it be a letter to mail him or a message on Facebook. He never reached out to me after I unblocked him, but given what he thought I thought of him, I think it's understandable. She, like many of you, pointed out that while he knew he was innocent, the thought of someone believing him capable of something monstrous like that could have weighed on him for all this time. And even if his reception of my message wasn't ideal, he deserved at least the closure that this new turn of events could provide. I took a few days writing and rewriting a message in Notepad. I didn't want to accidentally hit send before I had the wording right, and each time I sat down to write it, I felt like I came up short, even though the message just got longer and longer. Again, I didn't think just saying, oh, guess what I learned Paul is an absolute psychopath last week, surprise, would have been super appropriate either. But I wanted to find the right balance. Here's the message I ended up sending him. Hi, Mark. So this is a bit out of the blue, and I really don't know how to start this. So I'm just going to put it out there. I'm sorry for not listening to you. Paul messaged me last week and revealed everything, and I'm just sorry. This isn't easy to write, and you deserve so much more than just an apology so long after the fact. There's no excuse excuse for me not giving you the benefit of the doubt, other than I let myself be stupidly gaslight by a psychopathic maniac. I know I probably could have said more, but any time I kept trying to write, I felt like it was just me making excuses. I sent that to him this past Friday, and I'm pretty sure he read it sometime between Friday and Saturday, as the read notification had been there when I checked Facebook again at lunch on Saturday. I had been out with my friend Jenny, who had stayed over with me after I learned the truth, and when I told her I had messaged Mark, she wondered if he had responded, so I checked. Last night at about 6 p.m., my phone dinged, and while I thought it might have been a text from Jenny, or maybe my mom, I don't really text or talk to a lot of people, I actually found that Mark had sent me a reply. I wish you would have listened to me back then, but I'm glad you know the truth. I thought that was all he was going to send me when the three dots kept going across the bottom of my screen. He was still typing when he sent me pictures as well. They were graphic, and Paul's assertion that he had beat the shit out of Mark did in fact also come with documented proof from him in the form of pictures. Mark went on to explain that he filed an assault report the next day after my birthday. Day, but that the police had warned him against accusing Paul of assaulting me given the turn of events and my don't speak to me again text I sent him when he tried to explain himself. Nothing had ever come of his police report, and he wasn't even sure why. Neither am I, but he intended to follow up once more today. Mark is still very much the kind person I remember him being, and while I was bracing for him to hold a grudge against me, he instead just expressed his happiness that I finally knew the truth. We exchanged small talk through chat for a little while, but it was nowhere near the conversations we used to have. Mark is actually engaged to a girl he has been dating for about two years now. He had apparently never brought any of this up to her until she saw my name flash in his screen with the notification and asked who I was. While some of you expressed concern that my friends had smeared his name, he apparently never heard anything of it. He actually still works for the same company we had both been at just now in a copywriting role for the marketing team, so at the very least, the lack of a police report from me or making a scene at work worked out in his favor there. I asked if we could keep in touch, even if only with small talk, and he said that he thought that would be okay though he was a lot busier than he was back then between work and planning his wedding. While I thought that was going to be the end of it, he messaged me a few hours ago to let me know he refiled his police report with the added messages I had sent him and that if I'd be open to it, he'd like to meet for coffee with his fiance in tow and a friend of mine if I felt more comfortable doing it that way. Not really sure if that's an entirely good idea, but I shot Jenny a text to see what she thinks and if she'd be open to coming with. She said it's ultimately up to me what I decide to do and she'd be with me either way, so yeah, that's the update for those of you who have reached out and asked. Last update a year later, I haven't opened this throwaway account in close to a year and a half and honestly never expected to come back to it after I aired out learning about the gaslighting monster that had attacked my over half a decade ago. For anyone who wants more details, my profile has the posts logged and I'm really not trying to reshare and rehash it as I have gotten more than enough of that out of my therapy appointments. The reason I'm 
posting is primarily out of joy. My attacker, Paul, had a slew of other court dates already when I had filed my case against him, and I had started to lose hope that anything was going to happen since I was reporting an incident from over five years ago. But the court system in my state was stupidly overbooked, and I just had to wait for things to take their natural course. Over the last few months, I started to get follow-up calls from an investigator that was apparently going over the details of Paul's case. He was already facing some time in prison over a different assault charge. His time in AA had proven not to be effective even with trying to make amends, and the prosecutor was looking to add my report of assault to an overall criminal case against him, but it would require me to submit either a document to be provided as testimony or to act as an in-person witness. Though I had received Paul's message, I hadn't interacted or seen him in person for well over four years, and my therapist suggested I might get some closure over testifying against him in court. This finally happened last week. It was hard, and I won't lie. I cried while I was on the stand, but it felt good. The years hadn't been kind to Paul, and while he certainly looked remorseful sitting in the courtroom, I could give two fucks about how this was going to affect him. I left after that and found out just this morning that between his various cases, he's going to prison. I'm not sure how long, but I also know he is being added to the offender database, which is another win as far as I'm concerned. Other than that, life has been going pretty well. I've decided to throw myself into some new hobbies, another suggestion by my therapist, and have overall tried to just become the best version of myself as possible. My old friend Mark, who had taken the blame for Paul's actions for so long, got married in the middle of last year, and while he and his fiance had offered me an invitation, I didn't feel like it was my place to attend. We hadn't been in contact for so long, and I didn't want to have anyone asking me questions on why I was there, when I didn't really have any other friends attending the event. We message every so often, but he's got his own life, and it's not my place to intrude on that. I'm just happy that Paul's bullshit never got to derail his life in any huge way outside of the obvious. I'll probably never have reason to log back onto this account again, and really only did it today because I was just so overjoyed in hearing the results that it reminded me I had vented to you all so long ago now. To everyone who has reached out to check in on me, thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you.